Oh. Uh, you all heard about what happened in Egypt, right? <laughs> Amazing. Uh, two years before that, something was happening in the region. That, uh, you gotta do this, dude. You got to I gotta do <laughs> What was that all about? What do we need that for, by the way? <laughs> like, do this. You gotta you got hit that harder. Do this right now. You gotta hit it harder. <laughs> Can somebody help me? This is not working. It's a, it's, it's a video. There we go. So, <clears throat> that was an election. Uh, people didn't like the results because they believed that uh, the election was stolen, and uh, they wanted their vote back. They went on the street, peacefully, as you can see, and uh, just chanted that we want our vote back. This is uh, the sign that says, where is my vote? Nobody was violent, and everything started with government uh, pushing people away. This is where I actually understand what they call it Iran now. Yeah. Because it used to be Iran. But basically, a nonviolent uprising turned out to be a very violent uprising. Um, and as you can see, the brutality was just horrible. And Parazit had already started a couple of weeks before this event. And it, meant, it was meant to be a cultural show. But uh, clearly, after this madness, we decided to change our programming a little bit. So this is 2009 Iran, and uh, I have to figure out how to do this. Honestly, I want to give me that. They didn't. They didn't give us. Uh, <laughs> these guys are great, but they're like very pop tech, you know. <laughs> Should be more rock and roll tech. <laughs> oh, so that's me in 2009, and uh, and that's someone in 2009. And uh, this is us in 2009, and we work for Voice of America. Um, it's a government, federal government uh, entity that broadcasts in many different languages to uh, outside of the United States. If you guys are familiar with, with VOA, VOA is a, a very kind of uh, hard, dry kind of news programming. So Parasit was pretty much uh, something unheard of being, uh, being broadcasted from VOA. But luckily, we uh, were able to talk to our director at the time and uh, let him know what, the, uh, what our priorities were. And we proposed an idea that had humor in it, which wasn't anything like you know, hard news. And he was kind enough to say, OK, why don't we make this into a 10-minute pilot for now? And that's where we started. So, uh, yeah, we had a segment, and you all saw what happened in, in uh, that year that we started our show. Uh, we both are, uh, li we like satire, we uh, like art, uh, we like writing, we like movies, we like music, we like pop tech. <laughs> so, uh, this is the open of the segment that we proposed. آزادی، ادالت، دموکراسی، برابری، جامعه مدنی پاسوها در کدام دالان و نزد چه کسی است؟ کی من؟ کی این؟ این thing that, that we just heard has actually become a huge thing in Iran it's, a, it's like a common thing that more that people use. So this ki man ki in, which means who, uh, me, who, him, has turned out to be uh, the butt of all jokes in Iran. And, and they use it everywhere. So, uh, what is this? This is the, uh, this is the part where uh, we get to tell you that, you know, when they kicked out the foreign journalists out of Iran, uh, what happened was the Iranians uh, immediately turned into uh, civilian Journalism and uh, citizen journalism. Citizen, civilian journalism. Same. Civilian, civilian journalism. It's hold on. <laughs> Something's not working. But uh, 
citizen journalism turned out to be the biggest thing for us because we weren't able to get any footage or uh, pictures out of, out of Iran. And what happened was Iranians used their tel uh, cell phones and they, they started using social media. So YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook became their platform uh, sending information out. Uh, and this is, this is where Combis and I played a big part in receiving this information and basically reporting their own news back to Iran in a much bigger kind of uh, package so everyone would be able to see it and see what. This is what we were doing back in the days in TV people. We do this kind of stuff. We are, TV, we are TV guys, you know, we create TV, we create content for people to watch. You know, I, I write, you know, I host the show, someone is a producer, he's a video journalist, he's an artist, he's a, you know, a visual artist. Uh, so, Salman and I, before 2009, uh, we brainstormed some, some ideas, and, and all we were doing back in the day is creating content for people. What you just saw is the content that people gave us, and we made it a little bit interesting and give it back to them. So that became the base of the ideas that we had after that. Uh, we waited for people to give us content, uh, and we used that content and give it back to them. And since they didn't have any access to any form of media, this was perfect for them uh, to, to see uh, what they wanted to see from Voice of America. What's important is um, I think we had a very uh, close connection to our audience because most of the people on the streets, as you see, were our age. They were young kids uh, that were sacrificing their lives and basically giving up everything, looking for hope, thinking they're going to change everything in Iran. So we, we had a, a close bond with them. Even though we lived outside of the United States, these kids, we represented, we echoed their voice. And uh, this is how we kind of. So a demographic here, they're all young. We thought, OK, so in order for, to communicate with these guys, uh, uh, we have to understand how they live. They live in a uh, you know, suppr suppressive uh, environment where they don't have um, um, uh, access to information. And we uh, set a tone, an alternative tone for, for our show. It, it, it seems like the, this guys in Iran were doing this show at, at their home and producing it there and, and, and sending it out. This particular person right here, is one of our fans, Mohammad Mukhtari. Uh, he posted one of our shows on uh, his Facebook page. Two days after that, he got shot and he died. That we dedicated uh, a show to him. Uh, fans like this made our show what it is uh, today. And uh, if you go to next, uh, this is the demographic. So on. 70% of, uh, and this, is, this was one key element that we, proposed uh, in our original proposal to VOA, and this is how we caught their attention. 70% of Iranians are under the age of 30. Now you ask why, it's because we had a crazy war between 1980 and 88, and every time you have a war, there's a huge generation gap. And only 5% are over the age of 65. So 
it's extremely young in Iran, and um, it's ripe for democracy because they're very educated, they're very uh, modern, and Iran actually has the highest uh, rate of uh, brain drain in the world. So it's, it's a waste that we're losing these guys. Now these next, next clips are, are giving you a big, okay, basically uh, part of our success was we were very web friendly because when they were jamming the satellites, we were able to package something that was extremely web friendly for people to share it and want to look at it. Not knowing where it's coming from, who these guys are, not knowing if this is from VA or not. And part of it was because the way Combis writes the stories, uh, first of all, the content was very important. So uh, we always hit the note on, on important content. And the way he delivers it, it's kind of like your taxi ride conversation. It wasn't like, a, a, you know, this. Larry King type host or whatever guy talking to the audience and telling him what's good and what's very bad. Very informal. Very, very informal. informal. And know, we talk other, about important things in, in, informally. And the other part was we the 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 attitude of the show was very much uh, street artish, kind of like street arts, punk rock, kind of uh, alternative young, you know, <laughs> punk rock thing going on. I can't explain it, but you just have to look at them. So we started doing these little things to campaign for the show and, and people would spread these around. Uh, we made that in Photoshop, but it looks pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> so it started. That guy, that guy is waiting to shoot someone and, uh, and us being there at 10.30 p.m. Iran time every Friday, that, uh, that, that's very cool, man. That's one of your So best. we created this anti-establishment kind of like, you know, questioning the authority attitude and people love that because like we said earlier, they're, everybody in Iran is extremely young and very talented. So distribution. Uh, they jammed our satellite, obviously, and we started uh, going guerrilla style. And uh, we made this uh, show in different pieces, and we spent hours and hours going online and posting different pieces of the show in different forums. Wherever you see four uh, Iranians uh, talking about something on the web, we were there. Uh, we posted uh, the pieces of the show in, in a bit, like less than two, three megs sometimes. So they could um, transfer it with Bluetooth and, and, and all that, uh, the different for formats uh, of transformation. Uh, and also, we created some jobs because uh, people were putting the show on DVD and they were selling it. So, uh, uh, Internet Cafe. Internet Cafe. And then on Fridays, People go to Internet Cafe, like for instance, you pay uh, five, ten bucks to be uh, on, on, online for uh, uh, half an hour. The Internet Cafe, the guy already downloaded this on, on a USB. They would give it to you for five bucks or three bucks. So you, could, so you could watch it without spending all your time downloading it. And then it was all over Iran on DVDs for, they started with uh, 4.99 and it's 19.99 right now. So, so not only we, we were good for the economy, we created jobs, but on Saturdays, Sundays, Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, this is Tehran. It's one of the most horrible and most populated cities on this planet. There are about 14 to 18 million people. That's Friday evening, before our show starts. And that's, that's air pollution. So this is what the city looks like throughout the week, except for Fridays when our show starts. On Fridays, uh, do you guys remember the O.J. Simpson trials? And the last day, like, there was nobody on the street, and everybody was rushing home to see, find out what's going to happen. Fridays, when it gets close to our show, Tehran's clean. So we're good for the environment and the economy. <laughs> and they hacked us. Uh, so uh, the cyber army uh, of, uh, there are a group of people called cyber army. We never met them, <laughs> obviously. But uh, they hacked us once, and uh, they're proud that they can do something with uh, Hillary Clinton. I don't know. It has nothing to do with me. Uh, and, and things like that, we change it to next pictures that we're going to show. Sorry about the English thing on this. You know, I don't know. It's I didn't like my English. It. I'm sorry. So <laughs> yeah, you know, the, the Islamic Republic is, is an insult to people's common sense. And we use common sense to fight them back. Can someone tweet that, please? Please. Right. So every time we do some, they do something stupid, we try to counter them by using their work. 
So this is uh, us recycling their cyber, cyber junk. So again, we're good for the environment and the economy, <laughs> and we still get our message across. This is Iran uh, broadcasting outside of Iran to different parts of the world. They I can basically go wherever they want. Whatever have, they do. They have offices in the United States and all over the world. So they broadcast in Latin, English, all over Europe and across. Without being jammed. And that's how they treat everybody else, like us. So everything's blocked. In Iran, you have six media, uh, state stations, that's all, right? Six uh, TV stations that's controlled by the Supreme Leader, Ayatollah Khomeini. So they love sending out stuff. Maybe more. Six is but not But they have a problem Maybe more. with receiving. But we run out of time. That thing, I'm fighting against that clock. Oh, shoot. OK, this is the censorship commandos. Yeah. You, you got to watch this. This is how, this is how they. Uh, you know, get rid of our, uh, the satellite dishes. Okay. It looks like a scene from, uh, I don't know, like the Navy SEAL 6 going after bin Laden, but these guys are after dishes. And they're pretty good at it. So we have no choice but going online and, and, and uh, using Facebook and all different uh, methods of, <laughs> <laughs> of, uh, uh, you know, transferring our, our, our show online. Uh, we have started from zero, and uh, this is last week. We have seven, uh, how, how many? 710,000 fans. And you guys got to remember, it may not seem like a lot of numbers or fans here, but in Iran, it's uh, illegal to even get on Facebook. It's banned, so it's very difficult to get on it. And if you can get to it by using filter breakers, you definitely don't want to hit like and <laughs> let people know who you are. My man, John Seward, after 13 years, has two and a half million. And, you know, it's an English program in a free society. And, <laughs> so he, here's a, here's, <laughs> here's, what, uh, here's a little clip, and this is what goes on inside around. I'm playing a clip right here of, uh, it's a segment from. Now you know why our show called Parasite. Parasite means static. بله این برنامه پارازیت هفته گذشته بود یکی از ایران ضبط کرده فرست این چه کاری آخه برادر من از چی میترسی مرد سو سامان این کانال رو عوض کن برو یورو نیوز مثلا شما تصرف کن یورو نیوز از مادرید به بارسلون می رویم به موزه پیکاسو که هنرمند دوره از زندگیش را در این شهر گذرانده و مجزوب زیبایی از این نمی ترسی بعد از این می ترسی سامان نشون به دوباره بخش دیگر به آثار مربوط سامان شما ته سو دس That's, uh, that's why our show called Static. That's a Static. This is the experience you're going to have when you're in Iran watching VOA, especially Friday night. To wrap uh, it up, we're going to play a quick reel of what the whole show looks like today, three years after what we started as a 10-minute segment. Enjoy that. Hello, I'm Khamid Hosseini, and this is Parasite. برنامه پلید در حد تیم ملی ایران از طرف بچه های انقلاب که حالا شدن مزدوران در قیم آب خود فروخته ای عامل بیگانه ای دشمن ملت ایران برای شستشوی مغزی ایرانیان و فروپاشی خانواده های ایرانی از طرف پروپاگاندای تهاجم فرهنگی شیطان بزرگ برای بست سکبار در کشور اسلامی محمود احمدی نژاد گفت تفکیک جنسیتی در دانشگاه ها آلمانه نیست ما میگیم باز نزدیک انتخابات شد مردم فریبید چسبید به سخ با لبنیات در ایران ده پونزده درصد گرون شد و اینکه دیگه جونم براتون بگه اتفاق خاصی نیفتاد هفته پیش فقط یه بیسی نفر دیگه تو زندون و کلابات اعدام شدن همه همکاری ها با موزه لوور پاریس منحل شد می سازمان میرات فرهنگی هیچ گونه همکاری با موزه دوبر فرانسه نخواهد داشت تحت هیچ عنوان تحت هیچ شکل موزه است فرهنگ تو فلان با اونم شما مشکل داری با موزه لوور پاریس چه مشکلی داری من نمیدونم ها مونالیزه حجاب نداره با سرکوزی مشکل داشت شما با فلان با موزه چه مشکلی داری تو سردار رستم قاسمی فرمانده قرارگاه خاتم الانبیا که گفت سپاه 
حاضر بره خلیج مکزیک لکه نفتی رو که آمریکا و 600 تا کشور دیگه نتونستن از بین ببرن از بین ببره سپاه پاسداران بره خلیج مکزیک لکه نفتی پاک کنه تو اگه مردی اون لکه ننگی رو که روته پاک کنه های سپاه با این جنگی که علی مردم خود را انداختی لکه نفتی پیش کشه زمین که شما اصلا میدونی خلیج مکزیک چه خبره آهنگ مکزیکی و همه لختن دارن میرقصن اشق و حال و تکیلا و فلان و اینا شما از آقای قاسمی اگه بیای اینجا بخوای بری خلیج مکزیک انقلاب رو اساسا به خطر میدازی چون باید چشم بسته کار کنین چشم بسته هم که نمیشه لکه پاک کرد این بود برنامه این هفته پارازی من کامیز روستنی هستم سامان اربابی صدای آمریکا قاهره I just put it last thing This is what the Islamic Republic of Iran is afraid of This is our team right here These are the guys that they're afraid of um, I'm not sure uh, you know how do you you know <laughs> you look at them <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen Samon Arbabi from Parazit And my co-host, partner, co-worker, Tommy Zosaini. Thank you all.